You're listening to dialectradio.co.uk. And I'm joined now by Joanne Parkin, who's from Pusey from Wiltshire. Hi, Joe. Welcome to Dialect. Hi, Tony. Pleased to be here. Uh, now, could you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Because uh, even though it's a very countrified place, uh, Pusey, the middle of Wiltshire, it's actually there's not a lot of. I mean, I drive through or go on the train through Wiltshire and I often think there's hardly anyone that seems to live in this county. It mostly seems to be fields and sheep, but there's obviously stuff going on in Pusey, etc. So uh, what's it like living there? Well, it is idyllic and it is a, you know, village area, but it has a very lively um, undercurrent. It comes alive on the night time. Now, you've, but you've come here to talk about some pretty serious stuff, so yeah. let's get into that first of all. Um, you were in the St John's Ambulance and you came across some, what is pretty serious, child abuse, didn't you? I certainly did. So how first did you encounter it then? I first encountered it um, on a duty with a child who I'd never met before from another division. Okay, so just tell us what you were doing for St oh, John's I was, Ambulance. I, I, on duty with um, Pusey Cadets, I was duty officer. So I looked after the cadets whilst we were on duty. Okay, so this is a kind of a bit like the Cubs or something, whereas you're yeah. an adult or a young person, but an adult, in yeah. charge of these kids. Is it the badges they call them? The badges is... I was youth leader for the badges, but they can't do public duty. They're, they're 5 to 11-year-olds. Okay. So I was the youth leader for Pusey Badges. But I also used to do active first aid duties and help train the cadets. And how did you get into doing the St John, John's Ambulance? I was a cadet myself in the 80s, um, and I had a very positive experience. And I've saved quite a few lives through knowing first aid. Well, how? <laughs> first one, I, I didn't have any training. I saved someone from drowning, drowning in Germany, and I suppose it was natural because my parents were in the medical profession. Oh, OK. All right, but but uh, getting back to the abuse, uh, I mean, this is obviously this is in the news since Jimmy Savile. A lot more people talking about it. Um, what, what, what was? How did you encounter that? Um, I first encountered it when one of my our, our Pusey cadets was inappropriately touched, and I went through all the proper channels, and everyone was just ignoring me, or I could see the shutters coming down in their eyes. When you say inappropriately, how do you mean? And who was saying it was inappropriate? The the cadet was plucking up the courage to tell me something, and it went on for months, so I told her to spit it out. So she did. Um, rubbing up against her inappropriately. So and this was an older man, was it? Older than me, and I'm 43, so... Okay. And and how old was she? She Well, this is the dilemma, you see. It was either three days before her 18th birthday or a few days after. But either way, she could still be considered a, a, a child up well, until 21. It's not 21. appropriate in any case, is it? You know, especially if she's being so-called supervised by somebody. And she was a village girl as well, so she was led quite a sheltered life. And... I reported it through the appropriate channels. Within, and within St John's Ambulance? Within St John, through child protection, and hit brick walls. And then I took advice off another lady within St John, whose husband used to be a copper, and she said, you know, go above their heads. So I went to the commissioner. Well, this is a bit like the idea of the police investigating the police, isn't it? In yeah. a way, you've got to go outside the organisation if you're going to get a fair hearing. Nowadays. I threatened them I with the police right. first, first and foremost, and the papers, because they wanted me to get rid of this cadet and they wanted me to shut up and I was told to shut up. When you say they, was it this specific person or did they have people within St John's Ambulance who were backing them up to get rid of the cadet rather than to deal with the problem? People were just doing as they're told. People were following orders blindly, blatantly, just doing as they were told, is whether it, it was morally or illegally it, wrong. Is it, is it like the army almost, that people do what they're told, follow orders? Yes. Yes, very much like the MOD. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, now, so what happened then? Um, then I took the um, cadet, along with a, another appropriate person, so I wasn't on my own, to the commissioner's house on a Sunday afternoon and told her that if this wasn't dealt with... So you said the commissioner, is that overseeing Wiltshire or something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's in charge. She's still in charge. And... From then on, she called me trouble because they had to do something. And people were saying I'd, it was a witch hunt, but it wasn't because we actually caught 
this person doing inappropriate things before and was a danger and we couldn't take our eyes off him. Let's, uh, let's have some names of these individuals. The individuals, right. Well, not necessarily the um, girl that was inappropriately no, no, touched, no. but the, the people who were covering up within St John's Ambulance. Um, child protection team was Val Bateman. Um, she told the two witnesses who one of them was the cadet, that was touched up previously, to shut up and forget about it now. And Val Bateman, she was obviously in charge of um, child protection and she was very ineffective at, at it because she knew about Rob Harrison two years before I actually went to the police about him. And, you know, I told plenty of people and the children of Wiltshire told plenty of leaders, but they sort of knew they could come and tell me and I'd act on it. That, so who was Rob Harrison? Rob Harrison was the head of um, youth for St John Ambulance Wiltshire. He was also an NHS nurse working for the NHS in Great Western Hospital and he also used to own a private um, ambulance that used to move seriously sick patients from hospital to hospital via NHS contracts. All oh, right, so he was quite a favoured chap and so-called trusted with... Um, you know, with people who are ill being moved around in the privatisation of the ambulance service. But he's still, isn't he, at the St John's Ambulance, uh, Commissioner of Youth. And you can get him on a St John's Ambulance email address. Well, he shouldn't be, but not according to the police in the meeting I had, although I'm still waiting for the minutes. OK, well, let's not run too far ahead, because what happened next? Um, so I had several children approach me and tell me that Rob Harrison had been having sex with children at camp. And also, on the way back from the commissioner's house, with the cadet who'd been inappropriately touched, the boy, the young man who we were with, leant forward in the car and said, I could have slept with him at camp when I was 15. And, every, you know, it seems, and other people have since admitted this within St John, it seems that every single cadet in Wiltshire knew what Rob Harrison and his two little um, sidekicks were getting up to. But these are children, aren't they? It's so difficult to take what they're saying at face value. I go on instinct and children don't walk up to perfect strangers and tell them things like that, you know. it's um, I have a gift with children and animals and they, they know they're safe with me and I sort of attract them, they tell me things, but... In experience, I know they've told me for a reason, and I could also tell that this guy wasn't right because my instinct told me every time I was in the same room with him, plus the bullying I received for getting rid of the other guy. But um, Robert Harrison, he's, he's the guy who's been running the show above everybody else. Everybody else was dancing to his tune. That is his superiors at St John. Everyone did, did as Rob says. I could tell he was a paedophile. He, he said things in in my he bullied me he you know he's a very savile like character in you know airs and graces marching about like he owns the place well maybe he does well he doesn't he doesn't but you know there was a, there was an instant dislike for me anyway from him because i could tell what he was and he said things like while we were on conferences he said oh yeah yeah about children on camp he said but you don't shag them and he said that in front of 30 witnesses with us and, you know, and I thought that's a weird thing to say and like looking at me because I was trying to catch him in the act. I was trying to raise the money for my division so I could pay for myself and someone else to go and catch him at camp. But his division stole the money for an ambulance for Melksham, so... Crikey. So uh... we never... So someone, someone was obviously giving him inside information. Everybody must have known because... Everybody, everybody within St John knows that he was into. He, he was married. That was a sham. The children were telling me it was a sham, and it is right. He is gay. Is you know, he's not with his wife obviously now. I think that might have been the police turning up that did it for her, and him being struck off as a nurse, and he's supposed to not have anything to do with St John Ambulance because they're being so transparent nowadays. That's why there was no press there in court and nothing was reported on. So how do you think he managed to get away with it? Because he's got a Savile-like character. Um, hand on the shoulder, domineering body language, posture. 
arrogance, you know, I will, you know, they're very, very clever. They're very, very clever and ca and charismatic people. But did you it, feel you were doing this on your own or were there others around you that were uh, kind of on your side in a way? Or were you, or At the time, the only person I had on my side was my assistant and supposedly Val Bateman, child protection. But she started dancing. All of a sudden she went from knowing that I was trying to catch Rob Harrison to dancing to his tune and laughing around him and turning into mush and playing up to him just like the children do when they're in the, in the same room with him. You know, they have a lot of control over people and so, people fear them. So what happened with her investigation then? Nothing. She told... She never got back to me and she told um, the two other witnesses, which the police have interviewed, to shut up, just shut up about it now. That's child protection within St John Ambulance. So what have the police actually done? The police actually went on the evidence. They, they, they took my statement, then they went to my witnesses because a lady from Devizes, she also had stuff to add about camp. And so that I only found that after he got rid of me, you know. And so, hang on, he, he got rid of you. How did he do that? Because well, surely you're making a complaint against him, not the other way around. Yeah, what happened was, um, unfortunately, I'm not. You know, it's not up to me. You're not allowed to be prejudiced. So, when a little girl wanted to join um, St John, obviously I let. You know, I welcomed her, and her mother was a bit of a nutcase and rang up, saying something, not really incriminating me, saying that I'd said something, and he took that. Is his perfect excuse. It wasn't anything I'd done. She's left the area now because she's basically been chased out of Pusey because of she's a bit, you know, she's a bit of a horrible woman. But she gave him the excuse by saying I had been compromised as a youth leader, and obviously, I sort of knew I'd been stitched up. So I just backed off and went to the. Uh, well, I had a few months sleepless nights. Then I went to the police and said, look, I can't sleep. This guy's doing this. His friends are doing this. Everybody knows about it. It's been going on for 20 years. And they've been raping the children of Wiltshire for 20 years. And I don't know what's been happening in the hospitals. You know, but they, the police were so convinced by the evidence I gave them and the other witnesses that they did their general investigation then they left it a while and went back and did his house and that's how they found the chil pictures of you know children pornographic pictures of children on his computer so what's happened to him now um he's un he's on a well he was convicted but as we only got him for so 12 so when, when was the actual case that was on the 5th of august and i was there that was in swindon magistrates court so that's 2014 yeah last year yeah, um, it took them like three years for me first reporting it. I thought they weren't getting anywhere. Um, Sixty pound fine. On uh, he's got to sign the sex offenders register, and he has to attend some sex offenders counselling kind of thing for years. But what the main the main object was, uh, you know, I knew he wasn't going to get jailed because our legal system doesn't favour. The abused it favours the abusers, so I knew I wasn't going to get him jailed. But I knew that the children at Great Western Hospital and the children in Wiltshire were still going to be subjected to rape and abuse if I didn't do something. So I just stuck with it basically. The other thing, of course, is just to make sure the word gets around about somebody. Did you think that ha had much of an effect? No, there was no press there. There was no representative from St John Ambulance and there was no representation from the NHS. It has been totally So who was up. at the court case? Me. Rob's court case? Me. <laughs> from, from 10 to 9 when I was trying to get in before the courts opened till he'd been sentenced and I said my piece to him outside the courtroom that I'm waiting for his victims to come forward and I will be there watching when they do and I'll be there to help his victims so I've set up a group it's very small at the moment the St John Ambulance Victim Support Group because I'm sure there'll be plenty of people in the future coming forward and I'm sure it's not just a Wiltshire based thing So I mean it must have made you pretty nervous taking this on I mean how did you pluck up the courage to do it? I was petrified I was absolutely petrified um, I don't know something just keeps making me stand up for what's right uh, 
regardless of the consequences to myself, which have been quite harsh because I've been ostracised, I've been victimised, I've been bullied. Other people have lost their positions within St John for trying to defend me. Other good people within St John have been removed from St John in Wiltshire and, I don't know, with my last breath I will defend children and children's rights and I'll do as much as I can to keep them safe. But doesn't it bother you that the, the ultimate effect might be that uh, some of the best people, the, the most courageous people, people best prepared to look after the children in St John's Ambulance aren't there anymore? Well, of course they're not, because it's full of middle-class do-gooders who just want the glory. Because it gives you a certain amount of kudos. Oh, yes, I'm an NHS nurse, but I'm not only an NHS nurse. I own my own private ambulance company, I am God, and I also am head of Wiltshire Youth, St John. You know, that's that's some credentials, isn't it? And people just seem to fold under it. And anyone who had any decency has been long removed really from the youth, a couple of people have left because of what happened to me, give their, give their excuses and remove themselves from anything to do with youth. And other people are still there for the glory, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a strange one because I'm, so, you know, I'm the one who's been ostracised. Yeah, it was my kids who won out of the west of England for first aid and it was my kids who come forth out the whole country. In first aid, so I must have been doing something right, and I'm still in touch with the majority of my cadets and badgers now. So, and their parents, and the community. Um, what about the police, though? Uh, how did you, I mean, it's three years is a long time to have to wait after mm. first going to them to actually get a prosecution. Um, do you think the time has come where the police are more to be trusted by whistleblowers like yourself? Because this is always going to be a bit of a sticky wicket, isn't it? Because the police haven't acted in the past. No. And yet, after the Savile uh, case, we're told, oh, you, now things have changed, go to the police, and at least something will happen. Yeah, I think I think because it was a specialist, it was um, the safeguarding children lady, Debbie Neal from Salisbury, safeguarding children from the police. Um, it helps when you, I'm, you know, I know it's a man and woman thing, but it helps when you've got a woman who's, women tend to have more compassion. In, not that I'm slating men, just women tend to have more compassion. And I think if you're telling the truth, people can always see that. They can see that you're telling the truth. And she obviously saw that I was telling the truth and that my witnesses were telling the truth. Only I thought... I did have a bit of a rant on social media saying the police are useless, blah, blah, blah. But they had to keep silent because St John Ambulance, because I put a lot of posts out public, um, St John Ambulance have had people watching me since I left St John. They, they always seem, you know, they've been watching me. So if I want to say anything to St John HQ, I just put it on Facebook or Twitter, you know. But I, sp I suppose the the big question is, are the children in Wiltshire in, or anywhere else in the country for that matter, but particularly Wiltshire, which you know about, are the children, the Badgers, the St John's Ambulance youth safe? No. No, they're not. Because the whole selection, the whole selection by middle class people, nothing, not that I've got anything against the middle class, but they don't seem to live in the real world. And they don't seem to live in the same world as the children who were coming in from your regular Joes going out to work and the, you know, the regular people's children who are going to Badgers, they don't have anything in common. They don't know that they select by... They have a, an interview thing now where they select by kudos so it'll only be cer certain people who have a certain standing. It doesn't matter whether you're good at what you do, whether you're, you know... If you're going to have someone who was privately educated with a little title or someone who was comprehensive educated, good, hard work and decent person. The decent person is not going to get a position within St John anywhere in this country. I've been involved with St John Ambulance in one way or another since I was a child. It's, it's all for show. The good, like I say, the good people, they're the people who may still be in the background trying to keep their heads down, trying to do some good, but a lot of the good people were gotten rid of for uh, defending me or trying to say that I was right in what, what I've done. Now, I mean, I think you're a bit of an angel, really, doing the stuff you do, uh, and obviously got some real aptitude with children. You've got a real ability, real aptitude and knowledge around first aid. Are you able to actually um, sort of use that skill at the moment? 
or the skills with first aid and with yes yeah, so i'm still you know everyone in the village knows if anyone's sick or injured everyone knows to come to me and they tend to they tend to i've i've i've, I've had to deal with some i saved a guy's life in pusey one day we were going to judge children's competitions at head office he lost three pints of blood on me and still lived still <laughs> kept him alive I did, so uh, yeah. Well done, Joe. And also, you've met uh, through St John's Ambulance some of the sort of posh knobs of the land, haven't you? People like the Duke of Edinburgh. What about Princess Anne? She's not far from you. No, no, she's not. Um, also, I, I met Princess Margaret at school. I met Rolf Harris, and I met Prince Philip, and that Pri- was when I was was in St John as a cadet, actually in Hyde Park. Prince Philip, what did you make of him then? Well, I was a bit shocked because I was very camera shy. The TV cameras were there and there was about three to five hundred girls li- lined up with me. And he got off the back of um, his Land Rover thing that he was stood on the back and walked straight over to me. And obviously I had to curtsy and kiss my hand and tell me I was charming. And Rolf Harris grabbed hold of me, kissed my hand and told me I was a charming young lady as well and put me in the spotlight a bit. But yeah, it makes me wonder now what, <laughs> what, what that was actually all about. Well, you mean almost like um, them uh, coming straight over to you to sort of draw attention to you for some reason? Maybe, yeah. You get, you're on the right road there, Tony. Well, we'll definitely see, we'll on the see. right road I mean, there. Cer- certainly, uh, you know, the Duke of Edinburgh is uh, very powerful and the Queen's very powerful. We've got a general election coming up soon and... The Queen's personal private secretary has a quite a lot to say about the forming of the next government. I don't think for one minute that uh, that the royal family are just sort of there for show. They're not. They have actually quite a lot of political power. Yes, they they they, they had the f- country fooled into thinking that they'd relinquished all power, but that was a ruse, as we found out a few years ago. Anyway, Joanne Parkin, thanks ever so much for coming in to see us. Uh, it's been fascinating. Thanks for naming the names. Anything else you wanted to add? Yes, I'd like to... Um, if anyone else out there is against child abuse in any shape or form and want to do something... And if you're not, something, there's something wrong with you. Yes. <laughs> and it, in any shape or form, would like to join us in Trafalgar Square, 12 noon on April the 11th, for a protest against child abuse and the 24 alleged paedophiles that are still sat in the house of commons right now as we speak how many 24 we're up to oh and that's 12 noon saturday the 11th of april trafalgar square um how do people um contact you or contact the facebook um, okay joanne victoria park and they can contact me on facebook and any other way of contacting that march or that rally or whatever um yes you can contact it through um joe public joe j-o-e j-o-e public if they could look, it, look him up on Facebook, he started doing it all on his lonesome and ended up getting arrested because he looked at David Cameron. So we've decided that, you know, a couple of thousand people we know are definitely going, so we're going to do a silent protest with banners to try and get the message to Westminster, or Westmonster, as I like to call them. Crikey. OK, well, good luck with all that. Thanks, uh, Joanne Parkin, for joining us on Dialect. Thank you very, very much for having me. You're listening to dialectradio.co.uk. Okay. Okay. Okay.